And so we continue with question eight. Now we're starting to get into the longer questions now. So state three components of the CPU and describe their purpose. So there's one mark for stating the names of different parts and one mark for describing them. So let's start with some, uh, some parts we may deal with. So first one that's obvious is the clock. So remember a CPU has a clock and each time that ticks it causes a new action to take place. So it causes everything inside the CPU to be synchronized. So if I put something down like synchronizes all actions in the CPU, that'll get me a mark. Now, control unit. So the control unit is, it, as it were, the central brain of the brain of the computer. So that's where instructions are decoded before they are executed. So the control unit is the central hub of the CPU and it's where the instructions as to what the computer will do are contained. Another component we could talk about, we can talk about the ALU which stands for the Arithmetic Logic Unit. The Arithmetic Logic Unit is where all the calculations take place. So calculations and decisions take place here. Other parts you could mention, you could mention buses, which are the cables or the wires that carry instructions and data around the CPU. You could mention cache memory, which is the small amount of very high speed memory that's attached to the CPU or is very close to it. So any one of those five things there mentioned and a description of each one gets you six marks. Figure four shows a simplified diagram of the fetch execute cycle. Fill in the name of the missing stage in figure four below. So the fetch part of the fetch execute cycle is when an instruction is brought into the CPU from the memory of the computer. The execute part of the fetch execute cycle is when the instruction is actually carried out. So when between the instruction being brought in, fetched, and it being carried out, it has to be decoded. In other words, the CPU has to understand what the instruction means. Right, question nine. Sorry about the state of this one, but I had a bit of a printer meltdown earlier. Computer users will often store their data in the cloud. Cloud computing is where data is stored online. So like iCloud or Google um, Drive, something like that, where instead of storing it locally on your computer, you store it out there on the internet. State three reasons why you might want to use cloud storage rather than local storage. Local storage, in other words, storing it on your local device. Why might you want to use cloud storage? Now notice this is a state question, so you don't have to go into much detail. There's only three marks, one for each one. So we could say, for example, one reason might be uh, to share it with other people. Other people can get access to your cloud storage, so you can put it onto there and other people can access it. Why else might you want it online? Well, it saves space on your local device. 
instead of using up the uh, storage space on your local device, the hard drive of your computer or the memory of your phone, you save it onto cloud storage, which leaves your space free. Um, you could say you use it to back up your data because you know it will be safe there. So you're worried that you might lose your phone or your computer might break or you might get infected via virus. How can you keep your data safe? You keep you back it up onto cloud storage as well. And another one, bonus one here, you could talk about the fact that it means that you can access the data on any device. So if you store the data on your local device, on your local storage, then of course the only way you can access the data is by using that device. However, if you store it in the cloud, then you can log on to the cloud storage from any computer, which means you'll be able to get access to it anywhere.